Tardigrades, often referred to as water bears, are fascinating microorganisms known for their extreme resilience and remarkable survival capabilities. They can endure extreme temperatures, both high and low, as well as extreme pressures and desiccation. They enter a state called cryptobiosis when exposed to such conditions, in which they lose almost all of their water content and effectively shut down their metabolism. They curl up and lose up to 97% of their water content. This extreme dehydration halts their metabolism, allowing them to survive in this state for years. When water becomes available again, they rehydrate and resume their normal activities. They have a relatively simple body plan with a head, four pairs of legs with claws and a tubular body. Despite their simplicity, they exhibit internal organs such as a mouth, digestive tract, brain and reproductive organs. The minute sizes of tardigrades and their membranous integuments make their fossilization both difficult to detect and highly unusual. Arthropods, that mean joint foot, are invertebrate animals. They possess an exoskeleton with a cuticle made of chitin, often mineralized with calcium carbonate, a segmented body and paired jointed appendages. In order to keep growing, they must go through stages of molting, a process by which they shed their exoskeleton to reveal a new one. They are an extremely diverse group, with up to 10 million species. Hemolymph is the analog of blood for arthropods. An arthropod has an open circulatory system, with a body cavity called a hemocole through which hemolymph circulates to the interior organs. Like their exteriors, the internal organs of arthropods are generally built of repeated segments. Their heads are formed by fusion of varying numbers of segments, and their brains are formed by fusion of the ganglia of these segments and encircle the esophagus. The respiratory and excretory systems of arthropods vary, depending as much on their environment as on the subphylum to which they belong. Burgessia was likely a benthic sea floor dweller that probably could not swim. It has been suggested to have been a deposit feeder. The first segments and the coxae of the legs had inward, downward facing projections, which in combination with the projections on the opposite pair of legs was likely used to grip food and in combination with other legs bring it forward towards the mouth. Cerotrocircus may have been benthic or at least swimming close to the seafloor, as the robust head appendages rather suggest a grasping or raking function. It had a head shield followed by a trunk of 10 or 11 segments and a telson featuring a series of spines on the end. A pair of big eyes at the end of stalks ventrally emerged from the front of the head. Eurocodia is an extinct genus of arthropod from the early Cambrian. The taxon is only known from the Maotianchen shales of China based on some 15 specimens. Its segmentation resembles that of a millipede and it possessed head and tail shields with thorny spikes. The taxon has been considered a member of the order Molossinida, the group are suggested to be stemcalicerates. Wingert shellicus measured about 7 cm, the body of consists of just two main parts, a short head and an elongated trunk. The head possess a pair of large stalked compound eyes and seven pairs of appendages. The first appendages are long, annulated antennae. Within the remaining six pairs of leg-like appendages, the anterior two pairs are short and stout while the posterior three pairs were significantly elongated. Kylinxia is a tiny shrimp-like arthropod, measuring about 5 cm long. Its body is segmented and divisible into three regions, namely head, trunk and the pygidium. The head bears five eyes that are attached through eye stalks. Two of the eyes are at least double the size of the posterior three. Its head region has a pair of unfused, front almost appendages each of which has terminal and paired, serrated inner spines, similar to those seen in the radiodont. But unlike them, the front almost appendages face upward and lack outer spines, 
which is a feature shared by the great appendages of megachirons. The head of Cambropacacope have unusual anterior projection of the head that bears single large compound eye. Eye structure is well preserved, and it shows three layers in cornea, an outermost and innermost layer of transparent material and a hollow middle layer containing a dark material. Middle layer was probably used for serving to filter out the blue, scattered light from sunlight. According to its eye structure, Cambropacacope was probably a predator. With Gotticaris, these animals are hesitantly presumed to be an early offshoot under the clade Pancrustacea in original description. This genus is noted to have had two large eyes on each side of its head, with one massive compound eye comprising the entire front of the animal's face. It has a sac-shaped head. The spiny frontal appendages suggests that Carigmachila may have been a predator, however, fossils indicate a total size of approximately 18 cm and, with a relatively small mouth, suggest that it would have been restricted to very small prey. The brain is composed of only protocerebrum with ramified nerves extended to the median lobe, frontal appendages, and eyes. The body ends with a single tail spine that was formerly thought to be a pair of cerci. Pamdelurian was large for a Cambrian animal, and is estimated to have reached a length of 55 cm its head bore a large pair of frontal appendages, homologous to the antennae of onychophrons and frontal appendages of radiodonts. It was probably a predator, with a diet including arthropods and a benthic animal that lacked the ability to swim effectively. It was one of the largest and most abundant organisms in the Sirius Posset biota. Opabinia had a highly unusual and distinctive body structure. It had a long, segmented body with up to 15 segments, each bearing a pair of flaps or lobes. Its most notable feature is its elongated proboscis, which resembled a tube with a grasping claw at the end. This appendage is believed to have been used to capture small marine organisms. It also had five eyes arranged in a row on top of its body. These eyes likely provided a wide field of view, helping the creature detect movement and locate prey. Its precise position within the arthropod lineage remains a topic of debate among scientists. It lived during the Cambrian explosion, a period of rapid evolutionary diversification and the emergence of many different body plans and species. Tomisiochorus is a radiodont genus initially only known from frontal appendages from the Sirius Posset in northern Greenland. Further study in 2014 revealed that the frontal appendages were segmented and bore densely packed auxiliary spines, which were adapted to suspension feeding in a manner analogous to modern baleen whales. Amplectabellua had 11 pairs of large swimming flaps with strengthening rays along their front edges, and while it's unclear if it had a tail fan it did have a pair of long streamer-like appendages at its rear end. Underneath the smaller pairs of flaps on its neck there were at least three pairs of nathabase-like structures that would have been used to hold and shred up prey after transferring it from its pincer-like front appendages, chewing it up before passing it up to its mouth. Newly described anomalocarotid, Lyrurapax have exquisitely preserved brains, the structure of which helped to confirm a shared ancestry with velvet worms and basal arthropods. It is named after the outline of the body of this genus, which resembles a stringed instrument called a lyre, as well as its presumed predatory lifestyle.
Anomalocaris could reach impressive sizes for its time, with some species growing up to one meter in length. It was likely one of the dominant predators of its ecosystem. Its mouthparts were equipped to crush and consume a variety of prey. It had large, complex eyes that were composed of many individual lenses. This suggests that it had excellent visual capabilities, allowing it to spot prey and navigate its environment. In the early days of paleontology, the mouth and body of Anomalocaris were initially interpreted as separate organisms due to the incomplete nature of some fossil specimens. It wasn't until later that scientists realized these were parts of the same creature. Bukhari Saran, known from Maoshimshan Shale in Yunnan, is first described in 1995 as Anomalocaris saran. This species is only known from frontal appendages. There is a specimen that is previously considered as whole body fossil of this species, but later study shows that this specimen is not belonging to this species. Petoya and its junior synonym Legania played a major role in the discovery of the radiodont body plan. Initially interpreted as a jellyfish and a sea cucumber respectively, they were eventually shown to be the mouthparts and body of a single animal. It has been proposed that the frontal appendages of Legania were used to sift sediment for prey, however, some authors have considered this unlikely due to the small size and irregular spacing of the auxiliary spines. It has been alternatively proposed that it was a predator, using its appendages to capture slow-moving, relatively large benthic prey. Stanley Karras had a huge third eye, unlike anything ever seen in a radiodont before. A large unpaired eye was also part of the five-eyed arrangement in opabiniates, and finding a similar example in Radiodonts 2 raises the possibility that this sort of well-developed median eye may have been more widespread in early arthropods than previously thought. Along with the third eye, some of the Stanley Kara specimens preserve fine internal details of its nervous system and show that its brain was made up of two segments instead of the three seen in modern arthropods. Shinderhands wasn't as large as some earlier anomalocaridids, only about 10 cm long, but it was certainly just as weird. The multiple swimming lobes of its older relatives were reduced to just a single pair of flippers behind the head and a smaller secondary pair on the 11th body segment, an oddly fish-like arrangement. Some studies have considered its anatomy to be an intermediate form between earlier anomalocaridids and the true arthropods, suggesting that arthropods may have descended from somewhere within this group. Herdia is either suggested to have used its frontal appendages to sift small prey from sediment, or to have used them as a trap to capture larger benthic prey. Like other herdiids, it bore a large frontal carapace protruding from its head composed of three sclerites, a central component known as the H-element and two lateral components known as P-elements. Originally, it is estimated that body flaps ran along the sides of the organisms, from which large gills were suspended. As much as it might look like a sci-fi creature design, Egerocassus was actually a real animal, an anomalocarid from Morocco, living about 480 million years ago. Reaching lengths of around 2 meters it was probably the largest animal alive in those ancient seas, but it was no fearsome predator. The invertebrate equivalent of a whale, it was a specialized filter feeder, using baleen-like structures on the great appendages in front of its mouth to collect plankton from the water. Known from the Canadian Burgess Shale deposits, Habelia was about 2 cm and had a multi-segmented armored carapace covered in long spines and tiny bumps, and a long two-part tail. Its head was especially complex, 
with numerous appendages making up an intricate set of mouthparts specialized for crushing and processing small hard-shelled prey, an arrangement convergently resembling the jaws of mandibulates. Parapytoia is known from a few incomplete fossil materials with part of its ventral structures preserved. The frontmost appendages were a pair of great appendages that had a peduncle and four spines on each of them, a characteristic feature shared by other megachirans. It was in all likelihood a benthic feeder, spending most of its time on the ocean floor hunting for prey. The body of giant fengia is extremely elongated, though the animal itself was relatively small at less than 4 cm in length. The head has a pair of stalked eyes, a pair of great appendages with five potomeres and four pairs of biramus limbs. The maximum known number of trunk segments is 27, though most known specimens have 20, which are associated with pairs of biramus appendages and the body ends with a telson spine. The key features that raise the most questions about Yohoya are the arm-like appendages that grow from the front of the base of the head. These are more robust than the leg appendages, and quickly make a sharp bend, dividing the appendage into upper and lower portions. At the end of the lower portion a cluster of four large spines grew forward and it is here that the main question about the lifestyle of Yohoya begins. Some chose to interpret these spikes as being a predatory adaptation, used to grasp smaller creatures which could then be eaten. Heikukaris measured about 4 cm in body length. The elongated body composed of a semicircular head shield, 13 trunk tergites and presumably a short, spine-like telson. The head possess a pair of unstocked eyes, a pair well-developed great appendage, as well as three more appendage pairs of unknown detail. Alalcomenius probably swam, wafting its outer flap limbs in waves along its body to gain propulsion. Its inner limb branches do not appear to be optimized for walking, although it is possible, they help the organism move along the sea floor. A variety of other functions have been suggested, such as clinging to algal fronds, they seem best suited to grabbing onto, and tearing up, other animals, suggesting that the organism was probably a scavenger. Liancoilia superlata was about 5 cm long and had a hook-like horn at the front of its head, along with a fairly slender body with wide flaring lobes on each segment, and relatively long limbs. It had one or two pairs of downwards-facing eyes and its great appendages featured long whip-like feelers extending from the spines. It possessed a reduced labrum in front of its mouth, this supports the idea that megachirans were very close relatives of chalicerates, the group that include spiders, with their great appendages convergently evolved from a different set of front limbs. Marella is likely to have been an active swimmer that swam close to the seafloor with its swimming appendages used in a backstroke motion, with the large spines acting as stabilizers, as well as possibly also having a defensive function. They have been suggested to be filter feeders, with food particles sifted out of the water column by the posterior appendages during swimming before being passed forward by the appendages towards the mouth. Furca fossils have been found in sediments indicative of shallow marine habitats. Since appendages and other body parts are unknown, no firm conclusions can be made of the biology of furca. However, comparisons to other morellomorphs and living arthropods such as horseshoe crabs suggest a benthic marine lifestyle, dwelling on the sea floor. It is characterized by a broad head shield with three pairs of prominent spines, front, side and rear. Like previous animals, Mimetaster probably lived in small groups on the seafloor, walking in a tilted, upright posture propped up on its two uniramous legs. The first six trunk endopods are much larger than the remaining pairs, and were likely also used in locomotion, albeit with less power than the two main legs. They are thought to have been deposit feeders.
Isoxy's most distinctive feature was the large semicircular carapace covering their bodies, with some species also having long defensive spines at the front and rear ends. They had spherical stalked eyes and two large appendages on their heads. IT was an active fast-swimming animal with large eyes and raptorial front appendages that curled upwards and inwards, suggesting it was a visual-based predator hunting smaller planktonic animals. Riniella remains were discovered in 1919. Reconstructed from the scattered bits and pieces of its exoskeleton, it was described in 1926, and at first believed to be a larval insect, we know think it was a primitive form of Calembola. It grew to a length of about 2 mm and would have been a scavenger, feeding on rotting matter. For some time it was believed to be the only hexapod from the early Devonian.